Hello, Ricardo and Michael. Welcome. Uh, being for past, uh, we can start the meeting. So, uh, welcome to this core entry meeting, the last before ITF 119. This is Marco Tiloka, Michael Cesar, Jaime Jimenez, and Carsten Borman. And of course, the not well uh, applies. Uh, you are very familiar with that. Uh, IPR, uh, IPR applies, or oh, IPR matters applies, uh, as well as our conducom. That's so be nice with one another. And the agenda for today, where we are also taking notes, uh, link in the chat, um, is mostly about the point that Christian raised uh, on the mailing list on the ALPN registration. And a few points followed <laughs> right after that mail on a resubmission on uh, attacks uh, on co-op uh, with comments from John on the mailing list, uh, including an open point that we can uh, bring up again today. Uh, on the raise awareness uh, line and ongoing discussion that also Karsten brought up on the mailing list uh, on MDNS for net discovery, and then an early mentioning on a possible uh, schedule for the interim meetings uh, after ITF 119. Uh, I think it will be a relatively uh, short meeting, but there's time to cover any more topics. Uh, do you have any more topics to propose for today? There's none. Uh, let's start with Christian then. And I think you don't have slides, right? Uh, no, I don't have slides. Uh, this is essentially just a plug for the for for the mail on the list, um, stating that um, Michael Calendar says um, this uh, this evening. Um, another says tomorrow evening, but soonish. Um, I will ask the TLS uh, experts to assign an ALPN for COB over DTLS. Uh, this was not done in in RFC seven two five two because ALPNs were didn't exist back then. They were kind of two month-ish between publications. <clears throat> um, it would have made sense then. Um, Co-op over TCP did it and specified when to use the ALPN. Uh, the registration that I'm proposing here would not change any kind of, it, it can't because it's just registration, change anything about how it's used in the protocol. Uh, but it is helpful for things such as advertising DNS, uh, ad advertising uh, DNS over co-op servers um, J basically fits with the whole SVCP record business um, that has become uh, popular in the meantime. Um, I'll be re requesting something essentially as an individual, um, which works with the registration. I will be asking that 7252 is the specification for that, which doesn't say that it's used in the protocol, which is fine in a sense. And then let's see what the experts do. But ideally, this should be a simple registration. Uh, Michael has already made a few comments on the list. Uh, thanks for that. And um, yeah, if anything comes up, please um, either say something now or at least tell me that you still want to read it and then we'll send a mail so that I delay this a bit further. Otherwise, I'll do that either tomorrow, either today or tomorrow. I've gone through your proposed text on the mailing list. It looks fine as is, honestly. <laughs> Does anyone else have more comments from Christian on this registration? No, so I think you can just go ahead. Thanks for starting this. Okay, uh, on the next topic, uh, well, in a sense, it's also about Christian <laughs> as author of this uh, document. There was a recent resubmission that in itself uh, looks little more than editorial. It was. Uh, minor clarifications on the abstract uh, requested by Med, I think. Um, but in his mail, John raised um, again that point uh, related to this draft that we were supposed to address um, somehow, somewhere um, on a possible fix uh, on the use of blockwise and request tag that uh, uh, Christian and John Shallow uh, presented and discussed again. Uh, in an interim meeting last year. So you can find in the notes a number of pointers related to that. Um, so if I remember correctly, it, Christian had in mind uh, possibly to start a, a short dedicated document about that. Um, at least I'm not aware um, it's uh, it's been written partially anywhere or so. Uh, but an alternative uh, can actually be uh, taking this item as part of on the broader work on Corklar. Uh, Christian, I think you were 
Yeah, I, I, I haven't managed to make any progress there. So basically, it is in the state that it was uh, in, in around August. OK, what about considering Corklar for this? Oh, it works fine for me. Your audio cut very short, Christian. I guess you said it works fine for me. Yes, exactly. OK, thanks. Carsten. Yeah, I just wanted to point out, I, I submitted uh, Korkla again a couple of hours ago, um, mostly because it would have expired otherwise, um, but also to refresh my, my brain on what needs to be done to uh, address one of the, the discussion items. Um, so I took an, a verified errata report to, to make life as easy as possible for me. Uh, and uh, wrote a new section there. And um, I think we need to do this for all errata reports and we need to do this for all 25 plus issues that are in the GitHub uh, repo. Um, so this one was pretty much a no brainer. It was obvious what needed to be done. Uh, but of course, for the, the issues in the GitHub repository, we actually have to make decisions and um, I think it would be good to get some forward progress, even if we know that we will take a year or more to, to address all of them. But if we, we solve one of these per interim meeting, then we already are in pretty good shape from my point of view. So this is what I wanted to mention about Carl Klar. Thanks, Karsten for the revision and the summary. And I think it's a very good idea to use the next series of interim to uh, lively work on one or two issues per meeting, actually. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, your audio cut very short again. I, I guess you support this. Uh, yes, I do. And uh, yeah, it's uh, delayed to, to unmute again, day again. OK. Yeah, so we, we should pick one item uh, at least a week before the, the the interim meeting so people know what, what they should be preparing for and maybe we even ha can have a mailing list discussion and then we can use high bandwidths to, to uh, get a uh, decision and uh, so we will then get a new revision of the internet draft <laughs> and uh, finally get about 50 or something Okay, uh, thanks a lot. And on the next point, that's also something that Carsten brought up a few um, days ago uh, on a discussion happening in HTTP bees. And there was also a follow up uh, from Ted Lemon, uh, I think, uh, on the possible use of MEN DNS. So Ted didn't seem to like uh, the idea very much for constrained devices. Uh, you, you had an opinion on that in particular, Karsten, uh, right? Yeah, I think the, the, the non-obvious thing that, that brought me to bring this up is that this not only means you have to implement MDNS to use MDNS, but which is kind of obvious uh, and not a problem. Um, but if you ever want to be seen by anybody else, you have to implement an MDNS responder. And that's new. That, that's a completely new quality um, uh, about IPv6 uh, link local uh, usage. And I think we, we should be very, very um, aware of what we are doing here. Right. Any more comments right now on this? Uh, anyone? Well, otherwise, now we um, Christian. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused that there is a concern from Ted because I pinned him as, as being, being more involved with this. And the MDNS people generally have their mechanisms of um, doing things with less broadcasts and more, uh, and more, and more caching on the network. Um, I don't know the precise mechanisms, but I think there was something. I'm not a big fan of going through that route, but at least the the being always online 
concern should th there should be something better uh, around in the MDNS ecosystem already. Yeah, there, there actually is a section in the document that explains how to do that. So you have to implement MDNS. You also have to implement SRP uh, to to get less multicasting, and you obviously need to. Um, implement some discovery of, of the entity you do SRP with. Um, it, it's only a half page section, so it didn't go into a lot of detail, but uh, I think that that's actually a size amount of code that you actually have to have working there. Okay, do you actually plan to provide input to the HTTPB's discussion? Well, um, I started the thread uh, in the hope that we could get some uh, something we can just point uh, the HTTPB's people to because it's really not necessarily something that the HTTP people uh, interests. Um, so uh, Ted Lemon sent a response. Uh, which also mentioned this protocol, um, this additional protocol that you use for, for registering your existence with your environment. Um, and um, yeah, the, the draft now actually um, provides more, more information on how this actually fits together. Uh, so, um, yeah, maybe at some point we should be renewing the the pointer there. So I I definitely want to to have a look at this again because it's yeah oh because I just see how it is relevant to to core. Uh, there was a lot of work by Mozilla a few years ago that basically where ba that basically said kind of, yeah they, they had everything working except the security part. Um, now that there are things such as SVCP records and uh, and PLSA, maybe it's easier now to address that. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll I'll clearly have a look at this. Thanks. Thank you, Christian. Okay, good. And thanks for raising this topic. Uh, anything more on it? No. Then the next one is um, just early thinking, uh, of course, as usual, to uh, confirm and synchronize with the CBOR working groups uh, on the next series of um, interim meetings after Brisbane. Uh, speaking of which, CORE got a two hour session. Uh, in UTC time, it starts on Tuesday 19 at 23.30. It ends on Wednesday 20 at 01.30. But of course, double check a thousand times uh, on the agenda online. So I take it you're not going to Brisbane either? I, I take it online. <laughs> Correct. Uh, okay, but uh, after the Brisbane meeting, uh, the idea was to resume, of course, and ideally keeping the same uh, pace. So core on the odd weeks uh, on Wednesday uh, at the same uh, time as usual, um, resuming from um, April uh, 10, and there would be three weeks after the ITF meeting, basically. Um, we are planning to skip uh, the occurrence on May 22, because it's exactly where we have the uh, IoT hackathon event in Paris, also combined with the T2TRG meeting, exactly that day, by the way. Um, so it makes sense to skip uh, that instance. And even without it, uh, we are left with six uh, meetings in total uh, before ITF 120, which should be good enough. Uh, do you see any particular issue with this, Christian? Uh, no, it works for me. Okay, but uh, for sure I'll send uh, a mail to you and, and Barry uh, to confirm internally and then we'll confirm with the working group uh, around ITF 119 as usual. Thanks. Okay, and that said, we are um, at the end of the agenda. Uh, anything more you want to discuss today about core or related topics? Okay, the comment in the chat was about the... 
uh, I'll read it carefully later. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, but we are all on vacation in that time anyway, so that, that yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, of course, we still have to reason on these proposals, but uh, it, it, it roughly works that way. Okay, then. Uh, thanks for today. Have a good cutoff. Talk to you latest in the ITF on NT Week. Happy riding. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Bye.